Welcome back to Nautilus Projects. Today we are back working on this 1999 Triumph Daytona that we got running after it had been sitting for a number of years. We solved some electrical issues on this thing, did some much needed maintenance, and now it's pretty much totally streetable, minus some minor issues like turn signals, which we're going to be addressing this time. And we're also going to be going through and dealing with cosmetics. We have some cracked fairings that we're going to go through and do some repairs on and hopefully get them back to 100%. So let's dig in and maybe start by looking at these rear turn signals. So you can see these stock rear turn signals have been both broken. They stick out pretty far so probably what happened is walk past and yeah, you can imagine what happens. They tried fixing it with this aluminum tape and obviously that didn't hold up too good. So unfortunately, I kind of like the OEM look personally on basically everything. Unfortunately, they're pretty much unobtainium. You can kind of get them from the UK, but it's like a hundred bucks for crappy plastic turn signals. So instead, I got these kind of hideous eBay LED turns or uh, Amazon LED turn signals for like seven bucks. So even though they don't really fit the bike very well, they're better than turn signals that flop around and don't work. So. We're going to put these on. They should just be plug and play, so we'll start with something easy. So I think to get to the wiring, we are going to need to pop this fairing off. You can see we're also going to need to do something about our brake light. There's a tab over here on this side that's broken. It is present on this side, but I think we can make something work pretty easy. So we're going to start by doing something we're very used to, which is removing the rear seat, or removing the seat. And then we just got a few bolts holding this thing in because we're missing a ton of screws and hardware for this. Another major thing we're going to have to do is find some generic hardware that's going to work okay with these fairings because we're missing about 90% of the hardware and it takes this kind of hardware which is shoulder bolts and other odds and ends that aren't really easy to get. This particular fairing is in pretty good shape. I don't see any cracks or anything on it which is nice. So no repairs here, and now we can see our wiring, which this turn signal isn't working because one of these were unplugged, but you see these are just bolt connectors, so that's just going to plug right in, and no big deal. So you can kind of see how these are retained, there's just a nut that goes like that, and it's the same deal for the OEM connection. Here's one example of broken piece, this little cover back here. Unfortunately, I don't have the piece that broke off, I don't think. I'll have to double check that. If we do, easy repair. If we don't, see we're even on legal here. Kind of a rarity. Usually we're driving in Mexico, so you don't really need plates. Hopefully these holes are the same size. Move it flat in. Yep. So yeah, a little, little dinky looking, and I don't love the smoked look, but seven bucks, can't beat it. We may need to put a load resistor in parallel with this because normal flashers, when you put LEDs on them because of their light load, they tend to blink really fast. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Ah, dang it. Of course, these are opposite. So the lights are female, the plug-ins are male. So we're gonna be doing some cutting and soldering. Okay, so here are the splices I made. He shrunk and soldered. So these are directional, apparently. I'm not a huge fan of these, honestly, but again, better than no turn signal. See how bright they are. I did touch them to a battery and they were not too bad, so I don't know which is left and which is right. Apparently it does nothing. Kind of wondering if there's enough of a load. Which, like I was saying, we need to put a load resistor. I said, oh, wonder. I plugged them both in the ground. It's kind of weird. Okay, so that's obviously for our tag light. Seems like this does not work properly. I think it needs a blue resistor. Okay, real quick, I guess I should test this before I screw it all on. Same thing. Yeah, it kind of blinks with the when you flip the switch, but it's not doing anything. So I think what we got to do is put a load resistor in, put it in kind of up here, and I. I think we'll go with like six ohms or something like that. Kind of annoying. You go with LEDs, which use way less power, but it doesn't work right without drawing a bunch of power. There's the signals, they're not on that much, so no big deal. I'll go solder load resistor on here. 
So I temporarily hooked up our front blinkers and they kind of now work. That's weird. But you know, it's like it has a bulb out and also I got them on the wrong side. So definitely need some load resistors, which I just realized one of these fronts are broken too. So that sucks. I have two sets of these crappy ones, but they're not super bright. I mean, they work, I guess, but not very impressed. Although for seven bucks on Amazon, I don't think I can really complain. I think for now we're gonna have to put these on the front and rear, but I gotta get some big 50 watt resistors. I only have like quarter watt resistors, so we will put that to the side and I guess start looking at our fairing repair. Well, we're gonna have to wait on parts for return signals, so let's move on to the main event, which is all of this fairing repair. So this is the fairing that sits right in front of the seat. This covers that coolant fill port. You see we got a pretty sizable crack. It goes all the way over here. And we have corners broken off on both sides. Luckily we have the parts, so that's not really too big of a deal. I'm going to be using this stuff called PlastiFix, which works really well, supposedly. I've never used it. We're going to find out. This should be a fairly straightforward repair. The side fairings, one of them is going to be straightforward. The other one has a huge chunk broken off and it's missing. If we had it, that wouldn't be such a big deal, but we do not, unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes. But let's start with this crack. What we need to do is, first of all, clean it really well. And then we need to bevel the plastic about halfway all the way through this crack. And then we can start applying our plastic fix. I'm going to start by just cleaning this with soapy water. So we're going to do this outer side and then let the plastic fix cure all the way. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the inside. And supposedly this stuff returns the bond to its original strength versus some of the other methods of repair which kind of are a lot more prone to cracking and that kind of thing. And I'm just going to use some solvent brake cleaner to take anything else off. Might still be there. Let's see where our crack even ends. Looks like it goes all the way over here. So that's a pretty long crack. We are going to have to remove our foam also. So we might as well just do that now. See if we can save it, I guess. Probably not. Get a razor blade. Probably shouldn't even really bother saving this, but... But I take it back. Just the corner was glued, so it's worth it. Okay, and I'm just going to split this right down the middle. There we go. Now we can see our whole crack. Ends right about here. Carb cleaner will take all this off. Okay. The rest should just go away when we sand. But I think we'll start on the outside. So, first things first, we got to bevel this crack. I'm going to use this die grinder. This isn't probably the right bit. This is an aluminum cutting burr. Probably a normal burr would be best, but I can't seem to find one. So, we're going to use this and see how it goes. Try to go about halfway, so we're gonna take a little while. Yeah, these coarse flutes aren't really ideal. And he's chipping a little bit, but it's not like the paint is gonna be safe right here, anyways. So, okay, I think that should be about good. Yeah, the that coarse burr really did not do very well right here on the hole. That's okay. We're gonna have to re hog out that hole or drill it out or whatever anyways. Maybe I'll expand that a little bit because it cracks a little bit of ice that way. Okay, that feels about good. Now we're going to do something kind of unfortunate because the paint on this bike honestly is really nice so this part's going to hurt a little bit. Time to grind away all the paint around this. Turn our DA down a little bit. Apparently I'm using the world's worst sandpaper, but this is just the 150 grit. 
Okay, I think the rest we're gonna have to do by hand. I think we just gotta get that paint away right here and then should be good. Okay, that's looking decent, I think. Luckily this crack kind of pops back to where it's supposed to be, but I'm going to throw a little bit of tape just to hold it tight on the back side and keep stuff from falling through that hole. They didn't recommend using aluminum tape, so that's what we'll use. Okay, plus we have a little lip here to keep stuff from running out. Okay, so let's see if we can keep that a little bit level. Get this just a little bit more. And I think we're about ready to apply. So it's kind of a weird application process. You have this liquid, which is some kind of solvent, and you have this powder. So what you do is you fill this thing with the powder. <clears throat> you have a syringe bottle that you fill with the liquid, and the combination of the two cures into the plastic and actually melts or whatever into the ABS and fully bonds to it. But what we do is we drop a little bit of liquid into this powder container, dip the tip of the syringe into the ball that forms, and then we drop it on here and then it does its magic. So that is what we will do. Oh, it looks like it also comes with this formable, like, molding stuff that you heat up and then you can use this to remake parts. So I'll put some of our powder into this cup. Oop. Really fine stuff. Okay, that should be good. And then we'll put some of our liquid in here. Close the cap so we don't lose powder. This stuff is not cheap. Okay, I imagine that would be enough. Ooh, that is a strange smell. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That means it's the good stuff. Okay, then we have our applicator needle. And now we should be good to go. So, let's see how this goes. This is the first time I'm doing this, so. Drop a little bit in here. Okay. That seems to work. Now we just do that a whole bunch. Okay, now I think we just let it cure. They don't really specify an exact time, but once it's hard, I guess. Definitely interesting. We will see how it does. Now, this just makes the repair we are going to have to do some body work. So we'll kind of grind this back flat and then go over it with a filler and then we'll have to sand everything smooth. And then obviously to return it 100% it would need paint. I don't know if we're going to do that or not. Alright, so it's been about, I don't know, an hour or something. And I think there was some amateur application going on there, but that's okay. It'll work out in the end, but it's nice and strong already. I think I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side and I'll just do that off camera because it's the exact same thing. Then we can move on to smoothing this out and using a little bit of filler to make this hopefully good as new. This backside turned out a little bit better. So while that's curing, let's move on to one of these tab pieces which shouldn't be too crazy I don't think. So we're going to take this in place and I think we'll start on the backside because it's going to be hard to make a good groove. I think. Well, it's not really bonded very well. Should I get that attached real good? I think I'm even going to fold the corners in on the tape just to start. Keep it nice and rigid. So there we go. I'm just going to do this same exact thing. Alright, I think I got it sanded down enough, so now we'll go through the application process again. Now we'll leave that to cure. While that other piece is curing, let's move on to one of our side fairings. This is the good one. The other one's missing this chunk right here. So that's gonna get dicey. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but... I already did a little bit of prep on this. 
this sticker was already cracked through, you can get a new one, so I just started cutting away the parts that were not gonna that are gonna get in our way. Somebody attempted a repair on this previously with it looks like just super glue. So the crack wasn't closing up, so I cut away any super glue that was inside of here. And now it's pretty close, close enough that once everything's all sanded up, I don't think we're gonna have any issues. So I'm gonna tape this to where it needs to be. Okay, so I'm just trying to level this crack so that there's no jump on either side. We're feeling pretty decent there. I'm just gonna do the same thing now. Retape. Grab too much junk, but I don't think we need to go even deeper. Yeah, this uh, coarse flutes on this are not ideal. Definitely making some more work for myself on film. I think that'll be good enough. I gotta put a water separator on my compressor to see it blown everywhere. Okay, so we got this fairing basically all repaired, but this cover is fully glued up, I guess you'd say. So now we're ready to actually start doing the finishing work on it as I drop it and break all the tabs off again. I think what we need to do is knock down any of this plastic fix that is above the surface, which there isn't a ton of it. There's a little bit of it though. And then we're gonna come back over it with some epoxy and use it kind of like body filler, basically. This one's perfect. I don't even need to knock it down. We'll just hit it with epoxy. And that I'll sand a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna hit these with the DA, knock down the plastic fix, and rough up the paint around all of these, and then we'll hit it with some two-part epoxy. Got everything knocked down to where basically it all just needs to be brought up. There's like a divot, which is what we want because now it's time for our filler. Now Polyvance, the company that makes Plastifix, Fix, makes a epoxy body filler that they recommend you use for this kind of thing. I'm sure it's a very nice product that works awesome, but it's also very expensive. So here's what I'm going to be using, just some good old JB Weld. This is the fast setting clear weld stuff. It's a two part epoxy, I think it's going to be just fine. It's probably not as well suited to this as the Polyvance stuff, but I think it'll be just fine. So all I'm going to do is mix this up equal parts. We will then spread it on here nice and thick, enough that we can sand it down and kind of sculpt everything back to where it's supposed to be. Alright, so equal parts of this stuff. I'm going to take the cover thing off of this one. Downside, I guess you'd say, is this is clear, so it's probably a little harder to tell depth and whatnot, but feels the best way for that anyways, right? I am certainly not a body man, so take anything I say with a large grain of salt. However, you can judge what I say by the results, which are to be determined. We're going to need a lot more than that, I think. So we're going to want to be careful to pay special attention to all these little voids. We want to fill those in, of course. And this will also add a little bit more strength, although it doesn't really need it. It already feels real nice and rigid, so I am happy with this plastic fix stuff thus far. Keeping this level while it sets is going to be the biggest challenge. Supposedly it sets in five minutes, so. All right, I'll leave that to set, and we'll come back and sand. Here's our mostly cured JB Weld epoxy stuff. One downside probably of using this stuff is that it cures a lot slower, even though it supposedly sets in five minutes. This is overnight, and it's still mildly soft. You can kind of poke it with the fingernail, but I think it'll be okay to sand. We're gonna find out. The real epoxy body filler stuff, you can sand in like 15 minutes, so. And that would be one downside of this, but we'll see how it works. I'm gonna just start going over this with the DA and smoothing it out. 
probably have to hit all this by hand just to get it reshaped properly and then do that a bunch more times. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna knock it down with 150 first. Work my up, work my way up to I think like 320 or something like that. And we'll see how it comes out. Well, that was going pretty well until it wasn't. So this section over here feels really good. I was able to get it basically to where we want it, pretty close at least. This section, I don't know if the epoxy didn't cure all the way or if it didn't bond properly, but it just started peeling up. Probably what I need to do is uh, dremel this down into the groove and fill it. Or, I don't know, just break down and get the right stuff. So we will revisit this. In the meantime, I think what I'm going to do is double check that we have all of our cracks filled on all the pieces and then turn our attention to the worst part which is the left side fairing I believe which that's missing a whole corner piece. So the normal two part epoxy did not turn out very well. It didn't seem to adhere to the plastic very well at all. So I used a carbide burr and took everything back down. I also got rid of any of the voids that were in here just to make it easier to get the filler totally on there that we're not having to chase filling holes. So I'm just going to hit this with some 80 grit real quick and I picked up the right stuff I guess. This SMC hard set 2020 filler. It's not crazy expensive. I think it's like 35 bucks or something for this so it's worth it to not have to redo this repair at some point. So I'm going to get this ready by sanding it get it mixed up and then we'll apply our filler. Alright, so we got our area sanded. Now we'll mix this up. It's just 50-50 mix. And supposedly this stuff is sandable in 15 minutes, which is nice. Alright, that's mixed pretty well. Just put her on now. And again, I'm likely committing several cardinal sins of body work that I don't know because I am not a body guy. So feel free to point them out. Not that you really needed encouragement. It's like I mixed up a little too much. It's already looking much better than the epoxy. So, okay, I think that's good. Might hit this real quick before that hardens, just so we're not wasting it. Maybe this one, because it's a little easier to get to. Uh, but I'll bring it back once that's dry, then we'll sand. It's been close to probably 20 minutes at this point. The filler feels nice and cured. Way better than the epoxy. So, let's give it a quick pass with the DA just to knock it down and see how we did. Looks like we got one little low spot right there I might need to fill, but this maybe could go down just a hair more. It's feeling really good though. This filler, I gotta say, is pretty awesome to work with. All that I'm gonna have to do by hand, unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm gonna have to contour it to look like that, so that'll be fun. Looks like a couple more low spots over here, so I'm just gonna do that over and over until it's nice and smooth to all the cracks on all the panels. So it's gonna be boring, but I think before I do that, let's turn our attention to something that is gonna be pretty interesting, which is remaking this entire portion. We're gonna see how this goes. Probably not well, but We'll see. Luckily, this part of the fairing is not really that visible from above. I didn't even realize it was broken until I took it off. So anything we do is going to be better. And, you know, worst case, we cut it off and probably never notice again. Luckily, the other side, this piece is present, so we can kind of use that as a guide. Although, obviously, it's mirrored, so it's not like we can take a form and transfer it over. Here's what the piece is supposed to look like, so we're broken off about here all the way up to about here or so. Luckily, we only need to get it kind of close and then we can use a bunch of filler, which I think is legitimate on this because it's all plastic, so the epoxy filler is basically, you know, as long as we're not going crazy thick, it should be plenty strong and fine. It's not like a car body where you know, lay her on thick, sand her down. What we can do with this other one is take some measurements. So we'll go from this hole to this hole. Let's go to the end of the fairing. Okay, so we're looking at about that length, almost six inches from the edge of that hole to that tip, which I think needs to be about here. Before we go about building a form for our plastifix, all I'm gonna do is just 
knock this down not to like a knife edge but just so it's tapered and get all the paint off on both sides we'll do the same thing going into this repair because now it's basically the same as the base plastic so i'm going to do that real quick and then we'll start building our form now that's prepped i think what i'm going to do is put a piece of tape across here at the level of this as a reference and then we can measure up from this edge to figure out exactly where our point needs to be and then from there everything else is fairly easy. We should be able to kind of figure out the curve once we know the point because it's, you know, we have some to go off of. And again, this isn't super important. You can't see both sides at the same time unless they're off the bike, obviously. So if they're a little bit different, who cares really? And I already did the same over here. So you can see we're treating this corner as a straight line coming out here and then now we're going to measure up to this tip and then that's how we'll know our outermost point. So I'm just going to go back and forth, take some measurements, lay out some aluminum tape and bring you guys back once I kind of have the form laid out. So here's our form. Doesn't look like much, I know. I located the tip going off of this dimension, the height from that reference point we made, and then also the distance from this point to where the other one has the tip. So I'm fairly confident that's about right. It looks about right. And again, we only need to get it roughly shaped properly, then we'll come back with filler and get it made nicely. We're also gonna start with just this upper portion because this part where the lower most fairing attaches is at a different level. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky to do in one go. So we're gonna separate it out. This is gonna take a lot of Plasti Fix. So I did pick up a second kit, hopefully we have enough. Once we get the top layer made, we'll go on the backside and reinforce it with some fiberglass tape and then Plasti Fix over that. And we don't need to do all the thickness in Plasti Fix. We'll do the rest in filler. So let's start adding it in, I guess. Crop this up so it's almost level. So I'm gonna apply it on this differently than we have done the others. We're gonna put the powder straight in and then we'll add liquid after. We'll do it in layers. We'll go too thick so that everything gets liquid. Now we'll just start dribbling fluid in, wetting all the powder. It is washing it down a little bit, so we need to reprop. And we'll err on the side of thick because this stuff's going farther than I thought it would. I would have thought we'd be into the second bottle by now, but there still feels like there's plenty of powder. Okay, I think this will be the last layer. I just want to make sure we're adhered all the way to the main piece. Of course, it's been out of focus this whole time. Right, let's go loose another layer. We have the liquid to absorb up some of this powder anyways. Okay. Wow, that went better than expected. It's already looking pretty good. So I'm expecting that's gonna take a while to cure up, given how thick it is. We're definitely gonna to need to make more on the back side, but obviously it's not cured yet. Once we add in this portion too, that should help. Probably would have been good to do it in one shot. I just don't know how you could do that. Because obviously the liquid's gonna run off and you're not really gonna get different layers. I guess you could make it real thick and then kinda carve it out, but it seems like a waste to me. Anyways, I'm gonna let that cure. In the meantime, I'm gonna start filling all of our cracks that we went through, just like that first one, and bring you guys back once we're ready for the next step on this. So here's our repair cured. Let's remove our tape and see how it looks. I think we did pretty good. And again, this is just the rough shape we're going to have a lot of shaping ahead of us, but this gets us into the ballpark. Obviously, I forgot to take off this paper. It's stuck, so it's too bad. So it's going to be a bit of a chore. Oh, it's going, mostly. And even just this section of the repair, it's really strong. I can flex on it, and it's not going anywhere. You can see I'm putting some force on it to pull this tape away. So this stuff works really well. Highly recommend. Went a lot farther than I thought it would too. I figured we'd need to, to open up a second bottle at this point, but 
This is still this, the first one going strong. There's quite a bit left too. All right, I'm gonna work on getting that off, and then what we're gonna do next is form this lower tab section that's lower. But now that we have this, it should be a lot easier to get that to adhere properly. You can see on the original form, or the original casting, or whatever you want to call it, there's a section that dips down, so we're going to try to emulate that, and that'll give us a little bit better adhesion to the upper section, because obviously if we make that too thin, it's going to be easy to snap off. It's not critical. It, there's just one mounting hole for the lowermost fairing. That's the only reason we really need it. Other than that, it's hidden and everything, so cosmetics aren't a huge deal on this. Here's our form. I think it's going to be workable. So I'm just going to do the same process I did for this part. Hopefully it adheres okay to this. I went over this with a burr. We'll find out. So I'm going to do that real quick and then bring it back. Here's our end result for this section. Peel away the form because it seems to be fully cured now. Maybe give it just a little longer. Still got a little bit of flexion to it. Then we'll come back and I think what we'll do is get our rough shape going on the outside. And once we kind of have that dialed in, we'll reinforce the back side so we don't have to worry about sanding too much through on this. Then we'll do our shaping here on the face and this corner here. So it's shaping up okay. Okay, so we're fully cured. Looking pretty decent. It is a little thin down here, so what we're gonna do before anything is come on the back side and we're going to do another layer and also lay down some fiberglass tape which will help reinforce it. So we'll come all the way back into this area. I might grind a little away a little bit more of the paint, and then after that we should be ready to start sanding flat and using filler to form our final shape. Some of that aluminum tape adhesive is still on here, so I'm wiping it down with a solvent just to remove as much as that is possible. Okay, so here's our fiberglass tape. It's just like drywall tape. So we'll do a couple sections about that long. Okay, so before we do this, now that we've got this cut to shape, we're going to apply the plastic fix in the groove that I cut just at the seam, and hopefully that'll create a little bit of additional strength. I've done this about a thousand times at this point, and we'll go just a little bit below the surface because we're getting ready to put a bunch more on top. Okay, that should do it. A little bit more right here. All right, now I'm just gonna make tape that folds over the edge to keep anything from running off, as usual. Okay, that should do it. And we'll just do the application rigmarole. Maybe try to get a little bit more level. Okay, I'm gonna get this corner by tipping it up. So, you can see the fiberglass tape is fully embedded. We've built up a lot of thickness, so I think that's good enough. Let that cure for a while, because it's pretty thick application and then we'll come back and start our forming. In the meantime I'm going to keep working on filling all the cracks we already did with filler, making them smooth and ready for primer. And we also have this piece which in the interest of time I'll probably just remake that missing section off camera. Same exact procedure as what we're doing now and also probably quite a bit easier because it's a much simpler piece and we kind of have an idea of how that's supposed to go. Okay, I can't help myself. I'll go through this real quick. So this piece obviously is missing this corner and here's our form. It's just basically aluminum tape. How I made it is I set this on the table, put this edge here, and then we've got kind of a flat part right here. I line that up with the front of the table. You kind of use that to determine the length here. 
which also gives us the angle. And again, we just need to make the rough form out of the plastic and then the filler and sanding is how we'll shape it. But that looks pretty good to me. So we'll go through, do the exact same thing on this piece and continue on. Okay, so one other part we're gonna have to work on. And I know I'm jumping around, but that's because have different stuff curing at different points, but this tail light needs a little bit of attention. You can see there's been some repairs attempted in the past. What happened is these, the places where these screws screw into the tail light broke off. This one has held and it seems okay. So we'll leave that be for now until it probably breaks. But without the second screw, this kind of sits cockeyed in the fairing that goes around the seat. So what we're gonna to try to do is get all this old epoxy out and then just cover this with aluminum tape and basically fill the entire thing up with PlastiFix then drill a new hole and put a new screw in. I think that's going to work really well. So I'm just going to go through, clean up all this plastic with the grinding bit or the burr. We'll tape it off and just fill it on up with PlastiFix. By the end of this, this bike's pretty much just going to be PlastiFix. So here's that form I'm talking about. Very simple, and it should hopefully make something similar to that. So I'll just go through, same process, powder, liquid, repeat. Okay, we're all cured up, and should be just about ready to shape. See, you can't even see that fiberglass tape, and this is super strong. Any other repair, no way I would put this much pressure on it. But, you know, I can flex it just like this, no problem. So, very impressed. I did have to add a little bit more material. You can see right here, because <clears throat> I should have done this earlier, but it's okay. This lower part is what actually slots in, and it follows that body line. And you can see I went too far out, so it wasn't close enough. Still a little bit far away, but uh, the filler will take up the rest of that. We can do that final shaping. That corner, I didn't mean to make it so long, but we will cut it back a little bit. I think what we need to do is just start, maybe mark that edge. We can cut that edge off and then sand this fairly flat, put a layer of filler, start sanding it so that the contour follows and then we'll finish it up by matching it to that lower fairing piece, which also needs repair, of course, because I don't know if there was a single piece here that wasn't cracked. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is just start cutting down all these excess stuff and then just probably start by hand sanding this down so that it's fairly smooth. Maybe hit it with the DA and we'll go from there. Another nice thing is we don't need to do this cut right here. I'm not entirely sure why it's there. Who knows? But nothing slots into it, so there's no reason to have it which makes our life a lot easier. We don't have to worry about cutting it. But I guess maybe let's just start by hitting this with the DA and see kind of how it turns out. So this is just 150. Shouldn't cut too aggressively, hopefully. Maybe need to bump up to 80. Okay, let's test fit this with our lower piece before we take too much material off. So it looks like we need to take some material off this lower part, just a little bit, and then obviously this needs to come way up by about, I don't know, eighth of an inch, well, less than that, maybe a sixteenth or so. And our contour needs to come in, maybe I'll grab a pen and kind of mark where we want to end up. So that's all stuff we should take off. Maybe we'll just cut a little relief there, just because it's hard to get enough to sand it. Should have gone a little thicker over here. Can always add some if we need to. It's shaping up okay. So I'm gonna compare how the other one looks. Actually, let's just do it now. Okay, so you can see, not even a perfect fit. It's actually a little inboard from there. But we can kind of see the shape and compare that to ours. So yeah, we got lots to play with. And we wanna bring it in kind of flat. Right now it's like this. If that makes sense and we want to bring it in a little bit so great hand sand that some i'm going to cut a little bit of relief in here because it's still sticking up too much and then we'll 
slather on the good stuff and get it built up. Sand that down too. We're just about ready for filler. I have this shaped pretty close to where I want it. It's not exactly like the other one. The other one has a little bit more of an aggressive scoop, but it's close and I don't know how much more sanding I really want to do. Plus, the only time we're going to see both of them at the same time is, well, right now. So, this corner lines up perfectly with the lower section currently. What we need to do is put filler on so that we can bring this whole thing up about maybe that much. Not very much. We'll also apply here just because, make it smooth. And also, I hit any of the voids on this one with the burr, just that the filler gets in there a little bit better. It's hard to get into the tiny little voids. Overall, I'm happy with this so far, so let's mix up some filler and slap her on. This edge does need to be brought out just a hair. So putting some on there. Turn this out a little bit. That yeah, looks pretty good to me. Let that cure up for 15 minutes or so, and then more sanding. Our filler is dry or at least hardened, I mean. So I'm gonna go over it with just 150 and a flexible block, and we will see how that does. You don't need to watch me do this, so I'll bring it back once it's flat. Okay, so here it is. I think pretty much our final product. A little low spot right there I gotta fill, but this doesn't even have anything to do with this. Took a couple layers of filler, nothing crazy thick. You can kind of see the thickest point there. Is it perfect? No, this contour is a little different, and we'll fit it up to the lower piece and you'll see how it looks. Not perfect, but more than good enough for me. You're never even going to really see this part. It's all the way down at the very bottom of the bike, and especially once the, the lower part's on, you can't really tell anything. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let me fit it up. Maybe the, the body guys out there would disagree, but I think it came out pretty good especially for a first attempt at this kind of thing. Tricky to do it one-handed. Let me make sure I've got all holes lined up. So there we go. Again, perfect? No, but good enough for me. Obviously we got the one hole we gotta drill or use the burr on right there. So I'll do that. I'll need two hands for it. I'll fill that one low spot and then I think we're pretty much done on this piece. Okay, so if it I don't know if I've already done this, but I figured I would show the final product for this rear hatch cover. We have it all leveled out and it's basically ready for primer. Not exactly symmetrical, but it's close enough that if you're not really looking, you're not going to be able to tell, which is good enough for me. You can see I just did an identical repair on this as that missing piece on the side fairing. Embedded fiberglass tape in here and it is super strong. I'm not worried at all about this failing. Happy with this and with that I think we're just about done with the bodywork. I have to glue one standoff for that internal structure in this back in. This front cover is pretty much good to go. I have it already sanded down to 250 I think it was or 220 and we'll have to go back over everything up to 320 just to get it ready for primer even over all this paint which we'll get to in a minute, but this one's ready to go. This side fairing, also all smoothed out, we're done with the filler. I do have one tab I noticed that was broken, so that's currently curing up. This lower section also is ready to go, had a couple cracks on those holes, and a crack down here, that's now good to go. Our tail light repair seems to be pretty strong. Time will tell when we drill into it and try to thread a screw in. This from the factory it has a metal threaded insert which is nice but I think we're just going to try a self tapper into the plastic and see how that goes worst case we redo it not a huge deal and our last piece which was kind of the the main event is this which I'm really happy with not perfect again but as I drop it and break more pieces off uh, but it looks pretty good. I don't think anybody's going to be able to tell to repair unless you look really close. So that's pretty sweet. Oh yeah, we got one more piece. This main skeleton section had a broken part under this light. So made that piece. 
and then smoothed it all out with filler. It looks great. Well, I don't know if I'd say great, but it looks more than good enough for me, which is all I need. And with that, I think that's all of the bodywork done. So, just for anybody who maybe wants a time reference, maybe they're thinking about doing this similar job, this took me probably all in 12 hours or something like that. So it's a lot of work. It's just like any bodywork project, even on a car or whatever, just on a smaller scale. Hopefully the end result will be worth it. We will see. So with that, I will go get our primer that we're going to use. I'll go over all the parts with 320 over every single surface that is going to get painted. The color codes on this are kind of a mystery. I have not been able to find any kind of reference to what color this is. It's a really nice red, but um, as to getting a mix done for this, I don't know what the code is. So I'm going to see if a local paint shop can scan it and mix something up for me that's close. Hopefully close enough that it matches our fuel tank and the front section of the bike because I don't really want to paint those. If they're a little bit off, whatever. I don't really care. Alright, so I'm waiting a couple days for some paint because they're paint matching it. So that's going to be a little bit, but in the meantime I got our mirrors figured out. These are mirrors that were supposedly off the exact same year bike, but the whole spacing was much wider than the old mirrors, so this is ugly, but they were like 15 bucks and mirror, some mirrors are better than no mirrors. So what I did is I just used a burr and kind of elongated all the holes and now they're nicely mounted. They don't look as sporty as the old ones, but being able to see is nice. So, another thing I figured we can do while we're waiting on paint is maybe take this windshield off and see what we can do about clearing it. It feels like it's the same material as like a, a headlight lens, and I've had good luck sanding those down and then polishing them and basically having them look like new. So I'm going to take all these screws out and we'll see if we can kind of rejuvenate this windscreen because it's pretty gross looking right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is give this a really good clean with soap and water. Just remove any of the grime that might clog up our paper. Okay, we're going to start with 400 grit, which may be a little coarse, but we'll work our way up and see how she does. We're just going to keep going until the powder coming off is in yellow. Okay, so we're at a nice frosted white or clear look, except for the edge here, which I'm going to have to hit by hand probably. So now we're just going to make our way up all the way to, I don't know, 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, something like that. Okay, here we are after 600 grit. Feels real smooth. Um, you're starting to be able to see through it. So we just move on to 1,000 now and further refine our scratches. Okay, here's after a thousand grit. Was that there before? Oh, pretty deep scratch. I don't know if the inside needs done. We'll see after we do this part. But it's starting to feel real smooth. On to 2000. Okay, here's after 2000 grit. You can see we're getting really close. Now I think we're ready to hit it with compound. And there we are after compound. I would say that's good enough. Definitely an improvement. I did compound the inside just to get any scratches off. So let's put this back on the bike. All right, so another thing we can take care of is the repair for our brake light. So you can see I drilled a hole there in our repair. And I just used a self-tapper because I don't have a threaded insert to put into that. And we're missing the bracket. The other side has a bracket that looks really similar to this and it just clamps down against the fairing. So all I did is copy the angle of engagement, bent a piece of, I think this is 22 gauge, real thin sheet metal, and there you go, you can see how that kind of fits in, pushes against the fairing, and retains the light. So, good repair there. Okay, we're in the improvised spray booth, which right now I don't even really have filtration running because we're just priming but it is time for primer. So I've sanded everything to a 320 grit. Everything's looking really good. I also went over everything with Prepsol, or Prepol I think it is. It's just like a solvent to take off any oils and whatnot that are present on the old paint. 
So this is the primer I'm going to be using, 4 to 1, 2K urethane primer. And we're going to be using the infamous Harbor Freight Purple Gun, which is $9.99 or whatever on sale, which is where I got it. We'll be using a nicer gun for base and clear, but for the primer we're going to give this a go. So I'm going to just mix it up, 4 to 1, and then also I'm going to do one part producer, so it's a 4 to 1 to 1. We're going to do three coats with five to ten minutes in between each coat. It's pretty hot in here. I mean, it's not heinously hot, but definitely over 75 degrees. Uh, this is a 1.4 fluid tip, which is at the bottom end of the spec for this. It actually calls for a pretty small tip, as far as I understand, compared to a lot of primers, but we'll see how it sprays. So yeah, nothing too groundbreaking here. I'm going to go mix up our primer, and then... I guess we'll get to spraying. Okay, we're at four, and then we filled the four, and then we filled the four with our reducer. So I'm gonna mix that up, put in our gun, and get the gun got dialed in to spray. Okay, you probably can't hear me super well, but to my uneducated eye, that looks like an okay spray pattern. So I think we'll roll with that, uh, and then start painting, well, primering. Okay, so I'm not gonna film this whole thing, but I guess We'll just go for it. And it's pretty orange peely looking. I think we gotta turn down our pressure maybe. No. Wrong way. Alright. So I'll bring it back once I'm done. So we got our primer down. A couple things. First of all, obviously some rookie mistakes. A couple runs slash thick areas. Um, probably would be better to hang these instead of sitting them on the tail. Although that works, but for the for the base and clear, we'll probably try to hang these from something. The primer is starting to pretty much dry up in the gun, even with the you know the 15 minutes it took right because it's hot in here so I think maybe I'll mix in between batches for these next parts definitely got some solid sanding to do to clean these up but I will continue on I guess so do the rest of the parts once they're done we'll go over these and sand them get them ready for base all right so it has been almost 24 hours at this point drying in the hot basically greenhouse. Primer looks okay. A couple areas that I got a little close and there's some weird waviness and stuff, but we gotta sand it down anyways. Also, some areas, I think it's because I sprayed on the table, which I should not have done. Some of the edges have really kind of coarse textures. I don't know exactly why. But I'm gonna go through and sand everything with 400 grit. Get it nice and smooth. Hopefully we don't have to reprime or anything. Then we'll move on to our base and clear. And I think what I'm gonna do is set up a couple ladders and put a two by four or something in between them so that we can hang these and spray while they're hanging. That should make it a lot easier to get all the way around. I did set up a uh, filtration system just with a furnace filter and a box fan obviously. We may set up another one, a second fan if we don't get the airflow we need, but to have it run in, hopefully that'll help knock all the dust down that's in the air in here. Because there are a couple pieces of dust and whatnot that fell into the primer, and obviously we don't want to have to deal with that on our base on our base coat. When I spray, I'll either lay down a new sheet of plastic on the floor, or at least wet everything. I did blow this concrete off before I got in here, but you can still see there's some leaves and stuff that made their way in, so clean it out as best I can and at the very least wet everything before we do any more spraying. Alright, so I believe we're ready for base coat. Got all of our primers sanded down to 400 grit. I have the floor wetted just because this concrete's filthy and I don't want any dust coming up as much as possible. So I got everything hung. Hopefully we can have a little bit of a better time that way. I went over everything with solvent cleaner. Let's go over my gun setup. So I'm going to be using this Astro EuroPro gun. It's 100 bucks, and supposedly it's really good, so we'll find out. I'm sure it's going to be way better than that $9 Harbor Freight gun I used for primer. Right now I have the fan set just off of wide open and the fluid set wide open. Just 
take it out, hold the trigger, run it until it stops, and that's wide open. Here's the paint, the base coat I'll be using. That's what my local shop had. It's just an acrylic base coat. There's no activator or anything. You just mix it one to one with reducer. This was paint matched and it's pretty dang close. I'm happy with it. We'll mix that up. And one nice thing is since there's no activator, it's an indefinite pot life. So we don't have to, we can mix up a full gun worth and do all of our coats. Speaking of coats, we'll be doing two to three coats until proper color is achieved. Five to 10 minutes between each coat. Probably close to five because it's closer to 80 degrees in the, in the spray spray booth. We'll move on to clear coat after we'll give it a half hour or whatever. We'll just check on it and see when it flashes off. So we'll see how that goes. This gun, I'm gonna just run it up what the manufacturer recommends, 29 PSI into here. I've got fresh desiccant on my desiccant filter for the air compressor. Also drain the tank. We also have this water filter, which does work okay, and we'll filter out anything else that might get through. So I'm gonna mix up our paint. I'll set you up inside the booth, booth, and see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna hit everything with a tack cloth real quick, just in case we settle. settled. Okay, here we go. Gotta run. Whoops. Okay, it looks pretty decent so far. We did get a run over here. So I'm gonna have to deal with that, unfortunately. But that's just because I didn't was not familiar with how the gun sprayed. Rookie mistake. I think it's been about five minutes. It's hot in here, so we're gonna do another coat on this guy. And just work our way back through. I'm going to sh shut the camera off just to avoid overspray on it and then uh, bring it back once we got the base coat done. Alright, so I think we're looking pretty good. Of course the wind picked up even though it's been calm for the past week, so hopefully the uh, improvised spray booth survives. Our paint looks pretty good so far, just the only imperfection I know of is this one run. So I'm going to give this a half hour and sand it out. It's not even that bad. I could live with it leaving it. This is not going to be perfect. I did notice a couple little small pinholes or divots or whatever you want to call it that I should have probably filled it before painting, but eh, good enough for me. So I'm going to let this all dry up for about a half hour, sand that, and then we'll move on to clear. Okay, so I ended up having to move the spray booth because, of course, it, the wind picked up for the first time. And, couple weeks as soon as I started spraying. Base coat looks pretty good. I fixed that one run on here. It looks like it wasn't even ever there. So we're pretty much ready for clear now. It's been a couple hours. Um, not perfect. You see there's some divots and stuff that I never filled properly and a couple places where something tapped into the paint while the base was wet. We'll see if I wanna go back and respray some base, but uh, I'm gonna get ready for clear. We're gonna do the same thing in here with the wet floor. It seemed to work good with this. Spraying the clear is just more of the same, so I guess I'll just bring you back once I got the clear on, and we'll see what the final product is like. Not gonna be perfect, but it'll be good enough for me. I don't know if you can hear me, but first coat of clear is down, waiting 15 minutes for it to flash. Looks pretty decent. Couple rookie mistakes, gotta run there. Whatever, we can sand it out. But I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out so far. Far better than it was, which is all that I really want, given that this is the first time I've ever even touched a spray gun. So I'm sure you guys will have lots of critiques and tips. So feel free to share those. So one more coat of clear, and then we're pretty much done as far as application. And then we got wet sanding and stuff to do because obviously I made some errors. Okay, two coats down. They should be dust fast or whatever you want to call it now. Um, looking pretty good. Again, a couple runs and stuff. You see this run on this panel, just from idiot mode happening. A couple bits of dust and whatnot, but overall, I mean, it's a motorcycle. It's not like it's a car that you're looking down the side of and you see all the imperfections. And it's better than it was, at least in terms of the bodywork which is all that I really care about. The orange peel's not even bad. Uh, that's, I mean, I'd say that's probably acceptable. That's probably a, a lot of OEM finishes aren't much better than that. 
but we will probably end up wet sanding a lot of this to try to remove some of this dirt and whatnot that fell on here. But overall, I'm really happy, so I'm gonna let this dry. I think it's gotta dry overnight, or so I'll check the TDS, but I think it's gotta dry for a while before you can work with it at all. Probably good to give it more time than, than required, just to let it cure nice and hard before you're doing anything. And we'll probably mount it on the bike, mount everything on the bike before we do any kind of work on the wet sanding and whatnot, because it's really hard to work on this stuff off the bike just because it's awkward. You can kind of do it on a table, but a lot of the pieces don't really sit on a table right. I feel like it'd be a lot easier to do a car spraying wise, obviously not body work necessarily, because you got a lot more area, just because everything's more flat and any of the big parts that you take off, you can easily set on a table or a body stand, cart, whatever you want to call it, and get to all the edges. On this, no chance. Unless you have some kind of special stand for this kind of stuff, but hanging worked okay. Bring it back once we're ready to put everything on the bike. Sneak peek with this, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, there's some nibs and stuff in it, but Overall, I mean, I don't even know how much wet sanding I'm going to do. I might just send her as she is, even with the runs and whatnot. Because I don't know how much I care about that. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, it's reassembly time. I've let everything cure a couple days now at this point. Everything's looking really good. Even a day after the clear was mostly cured, it was just a little soft. Even now, if you really press... I tested on a part you can't see. You can mark the clear, so we just gotta be gentle with it. I think it takes a while to fully cure. I probably put it on too thick too. Anyways, this is the hatch already on the bike. Got this piece all sorted. You can see our color match is not perfect. I bet you if I buff the tank it might match a little closer. This red's a little brighter. I actually kind of like it. There may be some more painting in my future for the tank and for this front fairing, which I think it has a couple dings and stuff anyways, so it might be worth doing. Anyways, this is on. It look, looks good. The rear hatch goes right here and clips into that thing. So I'm just going to put this frame inside here. You can see we got this repaired piece there, nice and strong. So I'll get those all screwed in and we can pop it on and there we go not too shabby a the bike didn't come with the right hardware for all the fairings and stuff so this is what i could get not terrible stainless at least will work for now so you can see our repair you know it's not perfect it could probably go a little farther forward and hug the seat a little bit more but who cares it's there you wouldn't even notice it this side actually kind of has the same thing going on so not bad at all. So we can do the part that covers the radiator. It goes right in front of the instrument cluster. The foam that goes on here is still in good shape. We just cut it in half, so we'll glue it back on. Spray adhesive would probably be the best for this. Of course I'm out, but I've got rubber cement, which I think will do the job. Worst case, we re-glue it, right? Of course, I don't know where the my brush type is, so just glop this on and then spread it around a little bit on the foam. Okay, we'll let that kind of tack up. Okay, it's starting to get tacky. Go like this. Put a little bit on the corner, probably. I think that's good enough. It just needs to, you know, kind of stay in place, not be locked up like Fort Knox. It just sits right here, so let's check our coolant real quick before we cover this up. It's maybe a little bit low, but <clears throat> I've noticed it kind of settles in at this point. Or the fluid's like you can't really quite see it. Yeah, yeah, it was only like a splash low. Oops, which makes sense because there's no leaks. So, probably just went into the overflow. And there we go. <laughs> Man, this tank needs a buff. It's a big difference. And I wonder, you can kind of see some of the difference on the color match. If we hit this with a buffer, I think it might come back and look similar to that. Hopefully it does, because I don't want to have to repaint the tank, but we'll see. And again, it doesn't really matter. So I think these are the tank, or are the, are the uh, cover bolts. Of course, we're missing one, it looks like. 
why wouldn't we be? We'll do the top three and one of the side ones. And in all of these, I'm just tightening these snug, because obviously everything's plastic, so very nice. Okay, so it's time to put our side fairings on. I went ahead and got all of our clips set in, except for over here, because we never made a hole for it, and I think I'm actually missing that clip, so for now we may skip that, but I'll have to double check if I have that. Probably don't. Put our grommets back in for our turn signals, and out of all four on the bike, there is one that's not broken, and the other one, what I did, because it's some kind of rubber, I don't think you could really repair it very well. I don't know what chemical or whatever you could use to re-weld it back together. So what I did is I just taped this one back together with aluminum tape, went over it with electrical tape to make it black. Yeah, whatever. It's a turn signal. So, put these in, tighten the bolts on the back side. I believe we have these stiffener plates that go behind it like that. So I'm going to bolt those up and then I think we're ready to move on over to the bike. Okay, so it should just snap on there with the bolt that goes to there, the quick quarter turn fasteners that go on to there, and then here. So, let's see how it fits. Of course I grabbed the wrong one. Looks like that bracket's going I'm lucky that'll sand out. <sighs> Got the fairing all filthy, but it's on there. See, there's definitely a color difference between the sections. Probably need to repaint that top part at some point, but in the tank, you can see there's a pretty good difference. Okay, not bad. I'm gonna do the other side now, and then we'll come back and do the the lower fairing. Okay, so I'm gonna put the lower fairing on now. I'm gonna start from the other side. It looks like this thing's gotten a little bit warped, probably from heat. And also because I think this is the one that we made piece on. So to make this fit right, we're gonna have to drill that hole and get another one of those quarter turn clips. I'm actually all out of it. So I'll have to get some more of those. I guess this, um, bolt here will also help pull everything back where it needs to be. It's not going to be perfect. Kind of the motto of this whole entire endeavor. There you go. Kind of get a, a view of what it looks like. Looks pretty good in my opinion. I'm happy. You know, color match isn't perfect, but repaint those and no biggie. Or don't. Who cares? Got a bunch of junk all over everything, so I'm going to have to wipe her down. Yeah, looking pretty good. Alright, so I think we're just about wrapped up here. We have all the body parts on. Everything's bolted down. Looks pretty good. I gotta clean some of the grime off the frame itself, but overall I'm really happy with how it came out. There's no more obviously broken pieces. There's imperfections in the paint, but it's a good five footer and you could probably make it a lot better if I did some wet sanding, but good enough for me. So yeah, I don't think there's really anything else to do on this bike except ride it. So thanks for tagging along and see you guys next time.